This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information computing and communication. It is the third in a series of video clips on computer security. This third clip on information security will introduce cryptography, focusing first on its use for ensuring the secrecy, otherwise known as confidentiality, of information stored in computers or traveling between computers. Two of the main means for securing information in general are cryptography and availability mechanisms. Cryptography can be used in different ways for protecting the confidentiality of information, for protecting its integrity, and for signing it digitally. In this video clip, we will focus on its use for confidentiality. The next video clip will then discuss its use for integrity and digital signature. As you enter the world of engineering, you should always keep in mind that the vast majority of the information on the web is neither integrity protected nor digitally signed, which means that its source is not formally identified and its content not necessarily truthful. The next video clip will also survey briefly mechanisms for ensuring the availability of information which is related to its integrity. Just to remind you, the threat that confidentiality mechanisms are meant to protect against is information theft. The use of a confidentiality mechanism to this end is indicated in browsers by the presence of the little lock icon in the browser address or status bar. Cryptography is one of the main technologies for providing confidentiality of information. To understand the principle of cryptography, consider this picture from right to left. On the right side is some sequence of bits of information to be protected against theft. With cryptography, these bits are pushed through a so-called encryption algorithm that transforms the original information into a so-called cryptogram. Cryptograms are unreadable by unauthorized parties. The encryption algorithm amounts to a complex mathematical combination of the original information with a so-called cryptographic key. For an authorized party to be able to retrieve the original information, it must feed the cryptogram with a cryptographic key to a so-called decryption algorithm that will perform an inverse mathematical transformation to restore the original information. There exist two classes of cryptographic algorithms, symmetric ones and asymmetric ones, which we will look at in some details now. With symmetric crypto algorithms, the encryption and decryption keys are one and the same. Such keys must therefore necessarily remain secrets shared only by the parties authorized to see the information protected by that key. The best examples of such symmetric crypto algorithms are today the XOR algorithm, the binary exclusive OR function you have already seen in other lessons, the DES, the American Data Encryption Standard, which is getting old and no longer so secure, triple DES, which entails a triple DES encryption to make things more complex and secure, or AES, the American Advanced Encryption Standard, which was, however, designed by a couple of Belgian researchers. If you're interested in the mathematical details of those, just consult Wikipedia. Using any of these algorithms, an information can be encrypted by one party, Bob, on this slide, and decrypted by some other party, for instance, Alice, in this slide. Bob and Alice just need to agree on the same common secret key for doing so. To make things a bit more concrete, let us look at the XOR, exclusive OR algorithm, of which the truth table is displayed at the bottom of this slide, just as a reminder to you. When entering the encryption algorithm, every single bit of original information on the right-hand side is combined with one bit of the secret key. If the information and the key bit are the same, 
the resulting bit of the cryptogram is zero, otherwise it is one. On the decryption side, the inverse operation happens, meaning that every single bit of the cryptogram entering the decryption algorithm is again combined with one bit of the secret key. And if the cryptogram and the key bit are the same, the resulting bit of information is zero, otherwise it is one. As you can verify for yourself, any original bit that was not modified by encryption will not be modified by decryption. All other bits will be flipped by encryption and flipped again by decryption. Now, as you can see from this table, the drawback of the XOR algorithm is that for all of this to work as I just described it, the key would have to be as long as the information to be encrypted. Thus, you might rightly ask, what is the point of protecting, for instance, one megabyte of information if that forces authorized users to agree and protect a one megabyte key, a key that is as long as the information that they want to keep secret? This is, of course, a very good question. In practice, one does not use keys of the same length as the information to be encrypted. Instead, one uses limited length keys and one reuses the same key of the given length as often as necessary to cover the whole length of the entire information to be encrypted. One can even reuse the same key to encrypt multiple messages or pieces of information. The problem is that if one uses a key of length k, identical sequences of information bits of length k will result in identical sequences of cryptogram bits also of length k, as you can see on this slide. Thus, the more often a given key is reused, the more information it actually gives away. To take an example, assume we would encrypt an English message one character, that is one byte at a time, with an 8-bit key. Since letters occur in characteristic frequencies in any natural language, decrypting such an English cryptogram would not require knowing the key. Indeed, it would be sufficient to see how often each byte occurs in the cryptogram to deduce that the one with the highest frequency obviously has to be an E, the next one a T, the next one an A, and so on, because that is the way that alphabet letters are ordered by frequency in the English language. To avoid this problem, one uses a key in practice that is somewhere between 128 and 4096 bits long. Let us now take a quick look at asymmetric crypto algorithms. In this case, the encryption key and the decryption key are mathematically related, but they are different from one another. The decryption key must remain secret at all times, otherwise unauthorized parties could decrypt confidential information. However, the encryption key is public. Anyone can get a copy of it. The relation between the encryption key and the decryption key is, however, so complex that it is not possible to reconstruct the decryption key just knowing the encryption key, which is public. The best examples of asymmetric crypto algorithms are RSA, an algorithm invented in the late 70s by Ron Rivest, Adi Shamir, and Leonard Edelman, and elliptic curves, which are more modern algorithms uh, that have been invented more recently, of which there's a large family. If you're interested in the mathematical details of any of these, again, just go consult Wikipedia. In an asymmetric crypto scenario, such as decrypted, depicted here, every party needs to have its own pair of keys, one secret decryption key and one related and publicly known encryption key. If the same Bob as before wants to encrypt information that only Alice should be authorized to decrypt, Bob needs to encrypt it using Alice's public key. Then only Alice will be able to decrypt that information because only she has the secret decryption key 
that is related to the public key that Bob used for the encryption. Asymmetric crypto systems are such that anyone, i.e. multiple parties, can encrypt, send information destined to the one single reader, Alice in this case.